This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. Hey everyone, this is Kodemic, and welcome to Abandoned History, episode 13. Yes, lucky number 13. So before we dig into today's new topic, I'd like to welcome all the new subscribers to the channel. We're up to above 400 now, and the growth is just continuing ever since the Apple Guy video, and I just couldn't be happier. Uh, I just So today we're going to be talking about the Apple iPhone. And before you say, hey, Kodemic, the, uh, the iPhone's not an abandoned piece of history. It's still being sold. I have one in my pocket. Well, uh, I have one in my pocket, too, so don't worry about that. I'm talking about an early prototype of the iPhone. It's a really interesting story, so let's get into it. So we begin our journey 14 years ago with the development of the iPhone. Steve Jobs and his trusted designer Joni Ives, the great man behind the Bondi Blue iMac, assembled a team of over 1,000 people to work on Project Purple. That was the code name for the iPhone slash iPad development project. The goal of this team was originally going to be to develop a touchscreen tablet device that would revolutionize computing, but it wasn't to be. Many Apple pundits had been calling on the company for years to make a successor to the Newton PDA. Steve Jobs wasn't exactly a person who liked to be told what to do, and at the time he really believed that tablet PCs and PDAs were not good markets for Apple to be in, which is really kind of a shock when you think about it today. So instead of developing a successor to the Newton, Apple instead partnered with Motorola on a cell phone with a built-in iPod. The Apple Motorola Rocker, R-O-K-R-E-1, wasn't meant to be. It got abysmal reviews and really failed on the market, but it gave Jobs and Apple their first taste of the hyper-competitive mobile phone market. So by late 2006, Apple had dropped support for the Moto Rocker, but references in iTunes were already found that were talking about a new multimedia device that could display videos and pictures. Little did we all know that Apple wasn't working on a new widescreen iPod with touch controls, as Jobs said at the iPhone launch announcement. They were working on a device that would change the world. Through a partnership with Singular Wireless, or what is now AT&T, and a development cost of $150 million, the iPhone was born. The iPhone we know today with the Retina multi-touch display is a far cry from what one of the original prototype plan was. Recent videos have surfaced of a prototype interface that Apple was testing on the iPhone. The interface uses the iPod's trademark click wheel to navigate menus and of course play music on the phone. We're now going to take a look at this archaic interface that they co-named Acorn OS and see if we can figure out how it became a piece of abandoned history. This video released by Sonny Dixon shows the really bizarre looking interface. It looks something like a normal iPod you might see on say a Nano or a Classic, both with added features such as SMS, dial, contacts, there's no visible option for Safari or an email client, and you navigate using the virtual click wheel on the bottom and swiping as if it was a real physical thing. So we can see in between the top display and the bottom click wheel is an ever-present menu bar, I'm talking about that black strip right there, that houses media playback options. Apple may have really wanted this to be a content-first device, and that would make sense seeing as how these buttons are always on the screen there. So Sunny shows us a few built-in apps here underneath the extras tab, such as Notes, Calendar, Photos, and the Clock app. Sunny also shows us the missed calls section, so you can kind of see how you could dial with the click wheel right there. The hardware that the Acorn OS is running on is actually an early iPhone prototype, although you really can't see with how dark the video is. The hardware itself features an aluminum body similar to that of the original iPhone, as well as blazing fast 2G connectivity. The screen is that familiar multi-touch display found on current iOS devices, and it's really amazing that even back then, in such an early prototype, that Apple was already using multi-touch on a device like this. During my research for this episode, I was able to find this interesting patent that Apple filed during the development of the iPhone. The images appear to show the iPhone interface with this virtual click wheel that we've been seeing in the video, as well as a normal phone dial keypad. If you look at the image on the right, we can see something that looks similar to the iPhone's landscape keyboard today. It would have been neat for Apple to keep this virtual click wheel in the music app as a familiar way to control it for longtime users. 
When iOS first launched, the music app was even called iPod. Overall, the interface is uncannily similar to the original classic iPod interface that many of us know and love, but it's a far cry from the intuitive rows and apps that we have today. I'd have to say that Apple made the right choice in going with the app tile-centric interface rather than the one with the scroll wheel. It's still an incredible sight to see and it shows just how innovative Apple was in trying all these different designs when trying to design the iPhone. Although we may have seen the last of the prototype Acorn OS, the iPhone lives on and probably will for many, many years to come. But that's how the iPhone, or at least an early prototype of one, became a piece of abandoned history. I'll see you all later. So if you have an awesome idea for a future episode of Abandoned History, please leave it in the comment section below. I would love to cover it. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and share it with your friends, and I'll see you guys real soon.